Pterodactyl here, and we're on part two of the snow dog, or snow kitty, or whatever we decide to call it. And if you remember where we left off, I was gonna flip everything around so it would drive from the front instead of from the back. Good thing I tore it all apart because I found a bunch of stuff wrong with it that needed to be fixed, which I would end up having to tear it all apart anyway. So this is where the cogs go for the for the tracks and there's brass or bronze bushings in here and they're wore out on both sides so I looked them up and uh, got them ordered so and then for the steering in the back there was some other part that I found that was bad and I'm gonna take you over on the bench and show you show you what I found and about how I'm gonna fix it. So this is that mechanism in the back that when you pull those little levers, it releases these clutches. Well, on this side, this was all wore out. This was all flopping around. And this other end here with the sprocket on it, there's a bushing in there and that was all wore out. That goes on here like this. And then it's got these these gears that go in there, these planetary gears they call. And that's what makes it give like a differential action. Now the problem is they don't sell any individual parts to repair this. You have to buy this whole assembly from MTD and it's $250. And I could see where somebody had welded it in the past. They welded this bushing on there to try to fix that wobble, but that wasn't the problem. So I got out my trays that I keep of miscellaneous bushings and bearings and stuff. And for this, I'm adding a needle bearing, which is gonna make it better and stronger. Now this is an MTD needle bearing that they use on those variable speed drive riding mowers. You know, the ones with the two belts and it's got a variator on it and you shift the gears and it makes it go faster or slower. This is the, the needle bearing that they use for that variator. And that thing's spinning all the time. I, I, on occasion had to replace them needle bearings. So this, this is gonna be a good fix for this. So maybe you're a mower shop owner out there and maybe one of these track snow blowers come in for repair. The same thing, this stuff is all wore out. This is what you can do to fix it. Now Rotary sells that variator bearing. That needle bearing. For MTD, part of the numbers wore off the MTD number, but that's the the rotary number. And the other bag I took it out of, it's totally wore off. But there it is, and on one end of it, it's got a seal on it. There's a little little seal in there. So I drove out the old bushing, the bronze one, and I cut it down because this end was all wore out but the other end was still kind of good. Um, I'm sure they probably make a needle bearing that's longer and I couldn't stack two of them on there because then it would have been too tall. But it pressed right in there and it fits on there good now. So all I gotta do is fix this other bushing in the back. But this fits on there good now. Now it's not wobbling all around like it was before. You know, there's a little play in there. I'm going to do the same to this side. I'm going to pull this side apart, pull that bronze bushing out, put this other needle bearing in there. I'll pack this full of grease, this needle bearing, before I install it again. So for this side, I went through my little bronze bushings, and I don't know what this is for. It was just laying in there, but it fits. It fits over that and it fits tight in here. I just, gotta, I just gotta cut it down. So that's what I gotta do to fix this. 
then I can flip it around and put it in there and then we'll see what happens because I read the comments some of y'all seem to think by me flipping it around ain't gonna make any difference well guess what we'll find out won't we when I flip it around so you're probably looking at this and thinking oh man look at that he got that thing tore all apart oh man yeah well it's not it's not as bad as it looks actually it's pretty simple it's pretty easy pretty simple and basic for me might be harder for you so here was that lever that I flipped around to the other side that's got this bracket and then it would fit in these different notches pack snow normal transport and all that really does is it just kind of it kind of changes the the height of the track it kind of moves the track a little bit so I flipped it around to the other side and it worked. Then I started looking at it and I thought, you know what, I should just eliminate this altogether. I don't need it. But then this thing is gonna float. And it's gonna be floating like this if I eliminate this. So what I'm thinking about doing is, is putting some springs on here kind of spring mounted. So that way if I hit any bumps, it'll be like a little shock absorber. Because of course this is gonna be like this. It's gonna sit like this. And this is what goes back and forth. That's what adjusts the tension on the track. And that's what these little these little eye bolts do. They pull on that shaft. And the other end of the cogs go on here. So if I put some springs in here, that way if I hit any bumps, it'll have a little bit of suspension on it. And I'll just get rid of this, that thing. So this is what I'm gonna do. These are springs for the seat on a lawn tractor that you sit on because they're pretty stout springs and then I got me some I think this is an inch and a quarter conduit it kind of fits in there so what I'll do is I'll cut cut me two little cups off of here and I'll weld those little cups onto the shaft and then these springs will fit in those little cups then I'll probably take a piece of flat sock or a piece of angle iron and run it across here. And then since we got a smaller hole in the top, I'll put those springs in there and I'll put a little pressure on it, a little tension. So it kind of holds it down against here. And then I'll just run a bolt through the top, through the piece of flat stock or angle iron that I use to go across there. So I'll just run something across there like that. And then I'll put the bolt in the top, I'll thread it, I'll tap that piece of angle iron or that piece of flat stock, and then that bolt will just keep that spring from moving out of that cup. And then I'll have a little bit of a shock absorber there. You'll see when I get it all back, assemble it all back together once I get the bushings and get that other part in there. Now let's move on to the little sled part, the little sulky part. I'm working on that now. Okay, I started working on that sulky sled, whatever you want to call it. And I got that channel, that square tubing, tacked on there. I mitered it. And once I got it on the ground and put that, that seat uh, pedestal on there, I'm like, man, this, this thing is kind of narrow for your feet, especially if you're going to have like snow boots on or, or bigger boots. So I'm thinking I should have probably made it wider. But I think I got a solution for that. And then another thing I did is I took the axle out, and there were two different spots in there for the wheel location so I took it out of there and put it in that one that kind of raised it up a little bit maybe another inch and I tack welded this in 
and I took off those push caps they had on there and I drilled some clearance holes in there, a little bit bigger than 3 16 So that way, if I want to use it as a sled, I've got these lynch pins in there. So say I, I, I just want to use it in the snow, I could just quickly take the wheel and the spacer off. Done. And leave that little that little part hang out. That ain't gonna hurt nothing. And then if I want to put wheels on it, you can just shove them back on there and then put these pins back in. That way I don't have to carry any tools. Put that pin in there. Well I gotta leave this off anyway. Because I gotta show you the next part. Okay. Then I gotta weld this all in now. So then I went ahead and marked where that pedestal, seat pedestal is gonna go. And I welded some nuts to the back side. Because I'm gonna, you know, we're gonna close this all in. So I was trying to think, well, what kind of metal can I skin the bottom with? Am I gonna use more of that? That uh, diamond plate aluminum, aluminum, or am I going to use something else? So I was walking around out in the junkyard and I found some pole barn metal. And I thought this would be perfect. It's already got the grooves in it. You know, the little runners in it. So I brought it in and I cut it. My Harbor Freight little little break I got to kick it up in the front, and then I was thinking, well, these little runners, you know, there's nothing in there to support it. So half-inch conduit fits in there perfect. So this will support the runners. And then when I push down and put pressure on it, it fits in there perfect. So I can weld that to the front and tack weld it back here. And then that'll support those runners from collapsing. Coming together, huh? Again, all with junk laying around my shop, mostly. Had to buy a few things. So then I got that piece of diamond plate, aluminum diamond plate, which is two foot wide. And if you remember from part one, it had a little bend on the back. So I kept that bend on there. So now this will go on top like that. Now I got my width, so when I'm sitting on it, A little wider for my feet. See? Now I got some width. And if Mr. Cameraman can get down here and look, I'll just probably pop rivet this to that. And I'll probably cut this off up here. I got it marked. So I don't think it needs to be that high. So then I started thinking, okay, now I gotta attach this thing to the snowblower or to the track, the track part. Well, since I'm going wider here, Tripping over everything. I'm gonna have to support this metal out here because it's kind of thin aluminium. So I'll probably come out with some angle, one inch angle iron to support this. And then off of the end of that, 
angle iron that sticks out. Flip this around. That angle iron will come out to here. Off the end of that, I'll either weld a nut or I'll figure out something to weld on the end of it. And then what I'll do is I'll bend me some pipes and I'll hook it to the side here. So that way it can tip it like this up and down. I'll put one on each side. Then I'll extend them out and I'll have them come into a point and then one mounting point on the back of the of the track part. So that way when you're when you're going up and down through the terrain, this will pivot off of here. The pipes will. And then I found this. This is from a an old bobcat mower. I might use this or I might make something similar to this. But I'm going to mount this to the back. Because this is going to be the back now. So I'll, I'll probably put a pin in here and then this thing will go like this, up and down. And then my hitch will be in here for the uh, sled. So that will go up and down and back and forth and then this will go with it. So I think I got all that figured out. That's where we're at so far. Now, shut that camera off so I can continue working and building and putting all this stuff back together. All right. So I went out in the junkyard again, and this was the best seed I could find out there. And it's from an MTD. So hey, we're using a lot of MTD stuff today. MTD snowblower, that platform was from a MTD chipper shredder, and now I got me an MTD seat off an old 42 inch mower. Same one I was telling you about that, where that needle bearing come from. So I know it's kind of ratty, but I got a seat cover for it. So that'll be the seat. I'll mount that to there. And we'll have our handlebars. With our throttle or whatever. A little snow doggy will be pulling us around. Or snow kitty. Or whatever we call it. Somebody said snow rat. When I looked online, somebody already made a snow rat. That name's taken. I'm picking away at this platform or sled or sulky or whatever you want to call it. So I got it up to this point here. I got that conduit in there to stiffen this up. And got my little angle that I made on here. And this is going to be for the hitch. The hitch is going to attach to here, which is going to attach to the back of the track assembly. Now, if I had more of the square tubing, I probably could have made the frame all this size. But again, I'm trying to use stuff that I got laying around the shop. And I had just enough of this metal to do this. And I have a whole bunch of this one inch angle iron. So, that's where we're at. And then here's the platform. Uh oh, somebody's here and it ain't money. Oh, hey, what's up? What just do you want? want? Just wanted to see what you were doing. Oh, look at that thing. What? It's torn apart. Yeah, I had to do some repairs to it. Oh, yeah, it looks like you're doing something to it. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff that needed to be replaced. Oh, really? So I was fixing it. It's mine anyway. It's not yours. I don't know where you get off thinking you're... Yeah, you know what? The weird thing was is, you know, after I went for that little uh, trip, I was like, yeah, maybe that was his. So 
I was I was just coming to say, yeah, you can you can keep it. I don't I don't want it. Well, yeah, I, I was mean, keeping it. I mean, it's yours. I forgot. Yeah. Yeah, it is mine. So, uh, got any uh junk and stuff around here? Maybe I can get. You're getting on my last nerve, is what you're getting. Want to go for another flight? No, no, no. I think you built up enough frequent flyer miles for another free trip over the fence. Oh, I, I don't want that. You know, you know what? I'll just show myself out, okay? I, I was just in the neighborhood, you know, just checking up, you know. It's cold out there. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, oh, oh. Ha <laughs> scared him like a cat. All right, got rid of that pest. All right, he's gone. So here's the platform out of that diamond plate, aluminum. It fits on there nice. And I got the seat welded. And that's gonna go here. Now, maybe this has happened to you. The other night I got up to go tinkle and when I went back to sleep I couldn't sleep because I was thinking about this and I came up with an idea. And that idea is this. Check this out. This is made from an old steering shaft. That's why you save all that stuff. That's why I save everything. Same with these pins that I made. You know what this is? This is what's left of that link that ties the two wheels together on a Craftsman riding mower. It's 7 16 So that's what I cut up to use this. See, all stuff laying around the shop that I've saved. So let's get back to this. You know what this is? You know what this is gonna be? This is gonna go right back here. Now I ground a little, I ground a little uh, divot in there, and I'm gonna weld this to here. So that way, when I wanna take the wheels off to go in the snow, I got a place to store them. I can store them right under here. <laughs> That's what came to me in the middle of the night when I got up to go tinkle. So I'll weld this to the back, and then I gotta go get some more one inch pipe to make the hitch that's gonna connect it to the, to the track. So I'll just drill some holes in some one inch pipe, and then I got a pipe bender, and we'll bend it so it'll connect to the back of the track. And then our handlebars will come off of that track system and be up here. So now, I'll have to take it all back apart because I don't want it to rust and I'm going to paint it with port 15. I'll paint this whole thing, this whole platform, get it all painted with the port 15. And then uh, then I can, I'm gonna probably use pop rivets and I'll pop rivet this to the bottom. And then we'll put the top part on. Let me show you what else I did. I gotta weld these on yet. up the front. I'm going to weld these in. And then I'll probably come off of here with a little little support to kind of help that. And that should stiffen up where you put your feet and everything. A lot of thought going into this. Welded some angles under here, so I got something to attach the sled part to. 
And then in the back, I noticed there were two holes in the back of this platform. They were already in there. So I welded some 3-8 nuts to the back side of it. So that way, I can add a hitch. I can add a hitch to the back. Everything is falling all over the ground. So that's where we're at. That's where we're at on this. So once I get these welded on and secured, then I'll go ahead and paint it. Now to the track assembly. I got one half reinstalled. I got my new bushings. I ordered them and they came pretty quick. So I did this side already. So what I did is I drilled a hole and I got some Zerk fittings. These are quarter 24 thread. They also make them in six millimeter. So I drilled and tapped this and I greased it. So now I gotta do this side. I already got it center punched. And then I'll put the new bushing in. And then for the front, there was no grease fitting on there. So I just took a drill and drilled it at an angle since this is plastic. I actually went one size under. I went 1364 So that way when I threaded it, quarter 28, it fit in there nice and tight. So now I can grease the front which I already did. See, this thing's pretty simple. So let's go ahead and knock this bushing out, put the new bushing in, I'll drill and tap this, and then we'll stick this together real quick. I'll show you how, how fast it goes together. And then I'm working on my little shock absorbers for the track, because this thing moves this much. Remember that lever assembly? You had this lever assembly. I took that all out. So I went ahead, cut that piece of conduit, three quarters of an inch thick, and then I welded some steel washers in there. So I made my little cups that are gonna hold it. So let's get this side all back on. We'll flip it over and then I'll show you how I'm gonna do this. All right. Put it in the vise, got me a long punch, find the end of that. All right, we got that knocked out. Now, to put the new one in, you can just stick it in there, and with a plastic hammer, you can beat it back in. Or if you've got a big enough vise, you can use the vise as a press if your jaw opens up wide enough. Or in my case, I've got a little arbor press over here. I can press it in with. Yeah, easy peasy. So I need a 732 drill bit for our grease fitting. We'll put it in my $20 drill press. <laughs> 20 bucks, less than 20 bucks at the auction. I already got a center punch. My little block of wood. There's a spacer. I gotta do is tap it, put the grease fitting in there, spray a little, little tap compound on there. And there's our dinner.
Now let me blow it out. Got shaft all cleaned up. Slide it in. Come over here. Hook up the chain. And we got these two short self tappers. They use. Where's the other one at? That this thing is pretty simple once you get into it. Oh, strapping tools. Now I need the side panel. And that side panel has got these shoulder bolts that fit in these slots. So I'm gonna put some Never Seize, which we sell in our online store. Universal lubricant and anti-seize, or anti-sleeve. So I'm gonna to wanna to put some on here because this is where it pivots and I wanna get it around here on the hub. You can see how rusty it was back there and it was stiff when I took it all apart. And I'm gonna stick, slide this on. We got a little a little U-bolt. Put our little U-bolt on the top. There we go. There we go. Because this is going to pivot a little bit off of there. And we'll put some more anti-sleeves on here. Wipe some of that off. That goes in there. Can get the other one. Put a little on there and on that little shoulder. snow put our nuts on there oop I'm trying to put them on and stay out of the way of the camera Wrong size. Wrong size, knucklehead. There we go. Yeah! Put some never sleeves on this spline. So now we got our little pivot action. Here's the one that's splined. And I can tell which way this goes on because of the way the hub is and the texture of this. That goes on like that. Let the 
thought I had a three-quarter socket over here somewhere. I'll tighten that up later. Okay, so there's all that. We're going to want to put some never sleeves on this shaft. Because we got a spacer that goes on there. We've got this spacer here. We don't want that to get seized up. And we need the track. Here's the, oh, here's that three quarter socket. Duh, right there in front of you. We'll put the track on. Let me tighten this up. I thought I had all the tools here. Yeah. Here's our other cog. Flip that over, and then there's a sleeve that goes in there. And then we got another nut and washer. See, pretty simple. This is a pretty simple snowblower. All right. Now I can grease it. There's the grease coming out. Now I can grease this one back here. This one takes a lot more. We gotta fill that whole cavity up. It'll start coming out here, Mr. Cameraman. There we go. <laughs> now all I gotta do is adjust the tension on the tracks. And let's put a little bit I never sees on this adjustment. Because they were pretty pretty rusty when I went to take it off. And I can show you how I'm gonna put my little spring loaded track shock absorber deal. even a mount of threads on them tracks. You know what? I gotta loosen these cogs. Because I'm bending this. I messed up, grass rats. Yeah.
go. Now we got tension on them tracks. Now I can tighten these down. See? I learned something. So if you got one of these track snow blowers and you want to adjust the tracks, you got to loosen these up first. There we are. Back in business. Now let's flip it over. Flip it around. Alright. So now my little shock absorber. So we want it pushing down like this. So that way it'll have a little, little spring action. I'm going to put one of these here. That's why I didn't weld it all the way around, because I'm going to weld it to here. But yet, if I take this spring out, I want to be able to still be able to remove this axle. So this is going to go here like this. And I'll weld this other one over here. And then I got this piece of flat stock inch and a quarter, inch and a half, what is it? Inch and a quarter. And I drilled and tapped two three-eight holes in there. them down like so and they're gonna fit in there like that and that's what's gonna keep them from jumping out I'll line up the little spots where I didn't weld and we'll put this in there like so and then I'll put some spring tension on it and then I'll weld this in place and then if I ever need to remove these springs, I can just take these bolts out and I'll be able to kick those springs out of there. And now we'll have a little, a little shock absorber in the back. Pretty neat, huh? So now what I got next to do, make me a plate but before I do that, I'm going to stick the engine back on, temporarily bolt it down, hook the chain back up to it. And we're going to see how it dries with the improvements that I made, flipping everything around, making it dry from the front now. All right, got my little shock absorber made. Works pretty good. Some of you grass rats are right. I flipped everything around and it still wanted to wheelie. It didn't make a bit of difference. But it wasn't a total waste of time because then I found all those other issues that needed to be addressed. And then I was able to come up with my little shock absorber idea in the back. So it's really not that hard to flip this all back around. It's not that bad. So I'll flip it around and that'll save me from making longer cables. And I can put the handle back in the original spot that had bolt holes already in there. So I'll flip everything around, put it back the way it was original, and then I'll start, start adding the plate to the top and making the plate for the front. And uh, I'll get the, get the little sled all painted in pour 15 and I'll get it all sandwiched back together. 
So the next time you see it, I should have it all hitched up and uh, ready to take it outside and see how it pulls that slut around. I forgot to mention the brakes, what I'm gonna do for brakes. I'd like to go with hydraulic disc brake, like I did on the wheelie horse. Get one of those Chinese uh, levers with the caliper and the hose and all that because they're fairly cheap. And then I've got a disc from a quad. Somebody had given me a couple of these discs. Now I ordered a hub, a three-quarter hub for a go-kart and minibike, a keyed hub. So this is, this is what I'm thinking. I might get rid of this axle shaft that I used in here and just get me a foot long piece of keyed, three quarter keyed shaft that's keyed all the way across and try to mount the disc out here. There seems to be enough room and then if there's enough room with the caliper, I can mount the caliper in this spot here. If that doesn't work, I might have enough room to put it inside here on the shaft. I might be able, there might be enough room for this disc to fit inside and then I'd have to mount, make some kind of mount to mount the caliper, but I'd like to mount it out here if there's enough room. If that doesn't work, then I could do a drum break because I got the drum and I got the band, but that would probably have to go inside here. But that's what I'm thinking for brakes. And there's your dinner on brakes. And scrap them. Well, I got this all painted with the 415. I didn't actually paint it. I got Ronnie to do it. Can you believe that? Well, only because I threatened him to throw him over the fence again if he didn't paint it. So the reason I didn't paint this is because this is galvanized coated conduit. So now it's ready, or I mean, why well, didn't paint it? I had Ronnie not paint it. It's ready for me to put the metal on and put the deck on. So I'll get that all back together and we'll get the seat on and get the wheels on. And now back on here. So flipped everything back around original. I moved the engine towards the front to put more weight on the front end. Now this is just temporary. I'm gonna have a nice plate that fits over this whole thing that comes out in the front. And this throttle is temporary. A lot of stuff is just temporary so we can get it going. I did make a hitch. So here's the hitch. Again, made this out of some scrap I had out in the scrap yard. These were some kind of brackets for a, for a vehicle, a truck or something, somebody gave me a bunch of them. So I made me a little hitch, some flat stock and a bolt, some round tubing, and I used the existing holes that were in the back that mounted the, had the brackets for the cables that operated the auger and the drive. I also went to a 16 tooth sprocket. The one I had on there was 21 tooth. Um, that was just one that was laying around the shop. I figured I'd just start with that one. So that's what I did. And then once I drove it with that 21 tooth, I thought, well, let me drop down to 16. So I did. And then I'm making a template. So this will, this will mount underneath and then it's going to come up like this. This plate is actually going to be another two inches longer. So I'll move the engine even a little bit further forward and it'll come up and meet like this. It'll be more like that though. So it'll have a little bit of a, an angle to it. And then of course I'll make it so it's removable so I can get at it. But I'll work on that after we get it going. So, let's fire it up and let, let me show you how it, how it works now. Woo! 
And then the last thing I'll work on will be the brakes. But I want to get it so I could drive it. So I got the tubing that I'm going to use to connect to make my little draw bar that's going to connect to the track sled, I guess they're called. I joined a forum on Facebook, track, track sleds of the north. So you might want to check that out, Facebook group, where they're making them out of snowmobiles and stuff. So I joined to see what kind of crazy, wacky stuff those guys got going on. So we're getting there, we're ticking away at it like a piece of chicken. Well, I was hoping to have this thing hitched up so we could take it out and try it. But, of course, we ran out of time in order to get this video to you on Sunday, today, the day you're watching this video. So you'll have to wait till next week because I need a whole other week to work on this thing because it's getting deep. I didn't realize, you know, in your head you're picturing it and then you think, oh yeah, I'll just, I'll just make a little sulky and hook it to this snowblower. Yeah, it's not as easy as that. I'm running into a lot of issues. I'm going to have to put a lot of weight on this thing. I'm going to have to add a bunch of weight up here so this thing can get some better traction. Otherwise, them, them tracks are just going to spin in the snow and that. And then I need to do some more work on my hitch. And I may have to change the sled underneath. But we'll, we'll get to that when I when I get to those issues. So yeah, I see why they make them out, these track sleds out of old snowmobiles. These clutches, I may not even need these. I may have to eliminate that all together. I think I can just muscle it, but we'll find out when we get it hitched up. So stay tuned for part three. Hopefully we'll have it going. I didn't think it was gonna take this long. Subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terrell Fixes All, I'm Terrell trying to build crap out of crap or crap out of junk or junk out of crap go to our web store check out all kinds of stuff we got and as always there's your dinner Woo! gotta wait another week oh good thing it's winter time and i'm slow